Wii Music is a musical rhythm title developed by Nintendo EAD and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo Wii in 2008. Wow, sure said a lot of Nintendo in that inch. Hold on. Nintendo? Me? Nintendo? See, it is fun to say a lot, right? Buddy, no jokes. We're talking about a straight up legitimate Nintendo game on our show called Just Bad Games? Are you mad? Who knows? But I think we can agree that the Big N is without a doubt one of the most prestigious and respected companies in all of video gamedom. But don't worry, I'm sure they won't care much about our coverage of this one official release. Who cares about them? It's the rabid fan base, man. D don't you know? People hunt down folk like us. The crazy few that dare question the powerful Nintendo wizards and their masterworks. I don't think we need to be looking over our shoulders. I mean, heck, we're both fans of the bulk of Nintendo's illustrious library anyway, right? Of course. Who isn't? We're Nintendorks. <laughs> Plus, I think we've had enough time with questionable games in the past that we've shown at least some understanding of what makes bad games bad. Exactly! All the more reason to take a closer look at Wii Music. It could have been unfairly maligned for years. We have a chance to right the wrongs of history here. Great point! Now I'm hyper curious to dig in. There is music in all of us. We are born with it. Young or old, we all have the ability to express it. Speaking of curiosity, why was Nintendo so gung-ho about releasing a music game anyway? If I had to guess, I figure it all started with the rise of music-centric rhythm games. Oh boy, they've been around for a while. Yeah, they definitely have. Some more popular than others. But one home console release propelled the genre to an undeniable entertainment staple in the mid-2000s. A game that collectively rocked the socks of gamers everywhere. Guitar Hero. An iteration on ideas found in games like Konami's Guitar Freaks, Guitar Hero became a surprise mega hit at the tail end of the sixth console generation. It first appeared on the PlayStation 2 with its iconic guitar controller and entered cultural phenom status very quickly. The original Guitar Hero was followed with releases that spread across a wide array of platforms. And revisiting the Guitar Hero series on the PS2, the oldest platform you can play it on, we're still kind of blown away by what it delivers. A large track list with bonus music aplenty multiple difficulties, an enjoyable single-player campaign, and most importantly, the game is loads of fun to play. Input cues move down the screen or highway in sequential order, letting you anticipate what to play next. It's a great example of gameplay that's simple to understand and difficult to master, especially on some of the crazier difficulty levels. Still can't really nail that Dragon Force song. <laughs> But hey, it didn't matter if you were amazing at Guitar Hero. The gameplay was so solid that people were hooked even if they weren't familiar with the game's featured tracks. The game successfully broadened the reach of music from many classic and contemporary artists. That's how impactful these games were. Guitar Hero's success was so monumental that when the original development team split, it spurred the creation of a rival series, Rock Band, a game focused on combining gameplay inputs from several different instruments. Something Guitar Hero later integrated into its series as well. Well, it's hard to overstate how big rhythm games were at the peak of Guitar Hero and Rock Band's releases. The games were selling huge numbers and inspired plenty of alternate ideas and successor titles looking to latch onto the same rhythmic success. And with good reason. Those games were traditionally less complicated to develop than standard big budget titles. Take another ginormous release around the time of Guitar Hero's popularity boom. Halo 3. A lot went into Halo. You had a large, well-developed story, epic cinematic sequences, a cast of talented voice actors, tons of 3D modeling and animation for characters, vehicles, objects, and weapons, a massive soundscape, loads of level work and gameplay designs, and a huge online multiplayer system that kept the game relevant for years post-release. Woo! Sounds complicated and expensive to make. No doubt. And it was a tremendous success. But Guitar Hero cost far less in terms of game production. Heck, the budget of the first Guitar Hero was estimated at a tight $1 million. Halo 3 cost 30 times as much to develop. That first Guitar Hero simply didn't need to sell as many copies to make a profit by comparison. Crazy. So, we're saying Guitar Hero was easy to make? Of course not. 
Making games ain't easy. Locking down and licensing music, recreating their sound, making gameplay so solid that players would want to replay songs again and again. These are just a few of the challenges the Guitar Hero crew faced, and we haven't even gotten into other major components of the game's design. No, what I'm trying to say is that once the template groundwork was complete, the tracks in Guitar Hero, uh, the dot inputs telling you which notes to hit, were probably built into the game's highway track system with relative ease. Okay, I get ya. Guitar Hero had lower production needs than, say, your standard AAA game. And it went on to sell like hotcakes. Future entries could benefit from a similar design model, which is pretty apparent when you look at Guitar Hero's annual releases. Look, for six years in a row, they released over 10 Guitar Hero property games. They worked fast. Probably the biggest risk was mass producing those plastic guitar controllers we mentioned earlier. If nobody buys a game, sure, that would sting. But if nobody buys the game with the bulky guitar controller that costs more to produce and ship? Ooh, that's risky business. Fortunately, though, the plastic guitar they sold with the game? Oh baby, they sold tons of them, extra ones as well. And those guitars, to this day, an iconic video game peripheral. They worked well and meshed with Guitar Hero's gameplay seamlessly. I'd say their inclusion was a large part of what made the series so successful in the first place. Nothing beats the novelty of strapping a three-quarter scale Gibson SG around your neck and living out the rock star dream of playing Message in a Bottle in a grimy bar, but without having to, you know, learn guitar and actually play the thing in a a dank beer barrel. Okay, so Guitar Hero was mega popular and for many reasons. The game spawned a slew of clones of varying quality expecting similar waves of success. But what would happen if a legendary game company like, say, Nintendo, decided to create their own rhythm-based music game? Well, it's time to find out. Clear out your spit valves and tighten those G-strings. We're performing a sound check on Nintendo's famed composition, Wii Music. The recital begins here with a digital Muppet-like creature named Sebastian Toot. <laughs> Love that toot. Sebastian teaches you how to operate the game by demonstrating how to play a piano. Now, I'm no Picasso or anything, but I can actually play a little piano. Shane. What? Uh, well, you gotta give this a shot first then. All right, let's see. Here we go. Sounds like a pianist to me. Now, what do you call that piece, Shane? Sounds like someone slapped a writhing sturgeon on the jumbo keyboard from Big. I thought you knew how to play, man. I do, I do. It's not my fault. The only way this piano works is by waving your left and right hands up and down. That's not even how a real piano is played. It's all about fingering. Fingering. Oh, hold up, what's this? More instruments? Huh, guess that makes sense, right? It's not Wii Piano, it's Wii Music. So I guess they wanted to cover their bases by simulating a bunch of instruments? Almost each and every one is played in the exact same way, flapping your hands around like an idiot. And all this music. It sounds. It uh, sounds. It sounds like an auditory representation of budget at-home dental surgery. The only instruments that are any different are the wind-based ones, since they have you pushing a few buttons. But even when you do that, it appears to just randomize notes? Ah, ah, Nintendo, are you hearing this? You started your music game with proof that your game can't make music! going on? Oh, Jane, don't look now. There are tiny people everywhere. Who the heck are these little duders? <laughs> Sebastian Toot is calling them also Toots? <laughs> oh, oh, I think I get it. Toot isn't a last name. He's actually a toot. I've heard that word in other contexts, but clear the air, man. What is a toot here? Why is we music brimming with toots? <laughs> Uh, one second. Tappa, tappa, tappa. 
It would appear a toot is a unique Nintendo created entity or race that appears throughout Wii Music. I guess as you play songs in this game, these little toots slip out and work their sounds behind you. And they're pretty good. Wish we were bursting with talents like these bubbly toots. The end of the tutorial has you playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. person that's never heard Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Sebastian Toot caps off the tutorial by guiding you through the process of recording your little performance as a video. Hey, great. A music video of this. would want this. It offers a fun way for you to compose and share music with all your friends and family. It's blackmail material. Why does this whole intro feel so poorly cobbled together? Some doesn't smell right here. It's not the toots. The toots get a pass. No, I get the sentiment for sure. This is a Nintendo proper production. Their games typically have beginning moments that stick with the player in a positive way. Where's the fun? The fantastic. Where's that classic Nintendo polish? It is made by Nintendo, right? Yeah, totally. I I'm sure of it. But let's dive a little deeper into the credits and see who's behind this thing. Okay. Look at that! Wii Music is directed by Kazumi Totaka, notable video game composer and sound crafter who's had a storied history with Nintendo titles. Oh, right on! I'm familiar with his work. Of course you are! We all are! His name pops up on so many amazing games, like Super Mario Land 2, Mario Paint, Link's Awakening, Pikmin 2, Luigi's Mansion, and so many others. Not to mention he created the music you hear when using a Wii. Wii Sports is music. And the ultra famous Wii Shop music? Oh, beep beep, boop boop, bop bop, boop boop? Yeah. Beep beep, boop boop, bop bop, boop boop. Uh, beep beep, boop boop, bop bop, boop boop. <clears throat> beep beep, boop boop, bop bop, boop boop. He's also the voice of Yoshi. <laughs> wow, what can't that magic man do? <laughs> Make no mistake, as legendary as this person is in the mighty history of Nintendo for his incredible sound and music work, Kazumi Totaka was not a game director. At least, not until this game. So I'm getting that this is probably a one-off Nintendo experiment, huh? Nintendi was on a sales hot streak with the Wii. I bet they felt invincible when they were rolling in the proverbial dough. What was that meme again? It prints money! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, oh, it's oh stop the printer. Stop, stop, stop it. Stop, no, stop, no, huh? stop. Really, the only thing selling better than rhythm games at this time was probably Nintendo consoles. So they likely thought this title was a surefire winner. And why wouldn't it be? Wii Sports was a massive hit. It simplified beloved sports, didn't have expensive peripherals, and sold the Wii to millions. Wii Music could do the same for rhythm games. Pull back complexity by focusing on utilizing simple Wiimote and nunchuck controls, and bam! Universally accessible music game. Yes, true, true, it could have worked if it wasn't, you know, this, whatever the heck this is. Anyway, past the tutorial, we get a simple main menu. Nice, but it looks like something's missing. Where's the single player mode or career mode or whatever you call it? I want to try my best at playing songs to unlock other songs. You know, like that other game? Hmm, any sort of career or campaign mode does seem to be missing here. But look, there's a game section. Let's give that a try first. We've got three games to choose from. Maestro, which appears to be about conducting music awkwardly. Short review, you don't have the ability to really affect songs in an interesting way. As a conductor, you'd assume that you would kind of play the orchestra, but that's not here. You don't create your own personal symphonic art. What you do do is keep time. Yeah, you're a glorified metronome. About as fun as waving your hands to the face of a clock. And it's only five levels, so it's short and empty. Uh, great, that's a wash. What's next? Pitch perfect. You get eight levels, each one packed with 10 micro games that are all sound based, like selecting who has the highest tone. What sounds better? Who is playing the wrong note? Order sounds by lowest to highest tone amongst many others. This feels more like an early education music game, and that's fine, but I figured the Wii branding in Wii Music meant that everyone would feel at home playing through what this title offers. Not sure who the target audience is here, but... 
It ain't us. What's the last game? Handbell Harmony. This is a game where your me character rings handbells. It's as close to Guitar Hero as any of these games get, and it's borderline terrible. Just like Maestro, there's only five levels here. You're only responsible for two notes since your character only holds two bells. As you may have guessed, it never feels like you're given enough to do. A lot of the time, you'll find yourself just twiddling your thumbs, waiting for your turn to ring a ding. Not only are all the games here short and offer a measly amount of content, but they have shallow replayability and can be completed all combined in about an hour. Though I doubt you even want to play them for that long. But there is a bigger problem at play throughout all the games in Wii Music. Yeah! Motion controls! The game system and controllers don't always properly register movement. This causes problems, like the volume getting messed up mid-performance as you position your hand a certain way, or the timing to be off as you try to naturally play anything. I think we both agree with 100% conviction that all these so-called games totally suck. This cannot be what Wii Music is all about, right? This paltry showcase of minigames is already steering Wii Music into rip-off territory. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. Sounds like we should head back to the main menu. We have to find out what the core gameplay of this title is. Let's try Jam Session. What's it give us? A shockingly small selection of music, some of which we unlocked by flailing through those rotten mini-games. Fine, let's just give this a shot. <sighs> it's just an open session to perform a song. No score, no winning, no losing. Send in the cows, people, because this game's lacking stakes. Come on, we need something to keep us invested in this. Can we at least get some kind of Guitar Hero style highway chart to tell us when to properly flutter our controllers about? Sebastian Toot mentioned these little things called bebops in the corner. They basically set the tempo or speed you should be waving to. Bebops, it seems like, is all we've got. <laughs> That's a problem. What if I don't know the song? How will I know when to trigger the instruments? Hey, what is that bottom left music note thing that says on slash off? Push that button on the Wii remote. How oh, would you look at that? Sebastian Toot failed to mention there was an actual note trigger indicator. Why would they even bother hiding this? Why do you need to trigger it on? Shouldn't this have been on by default and covered in that opening tutorial? Guitar Hero locked this down. The colored icons flow to the bottom of the screen. You hold the corresponding colored button on the guitar controller and strum. Easy to learn at the start, but hard to master as you advance in difficulty. It tricks you into feeling like you're playing the song for real. Very satisfying. Wii Music, however, uses a system with no variety. 90% of the time, it's just these simple note icons. A little gray symbol that just says, hey, move your hand or something. If you have a wind instrument, you press one button. Every other instrument, the main input to play any sound is a random hand movement. As basic as can be. Very unsatisfying. Well, what if you need to hold a note longer? Uh, seems like the game doesn't tell you if you should do that or not. What? Why? In Guitar Hero, if you need to hold a note, it becomes a solid line extending beyond the note you hit. Super easy to understand. Wii Music forgot to add that in? Seems like that's the case. You can hold a note with certain instruments for as long as you'd like. Start to finish for a whole entire song if you want. <laughs> The game 
doesn't seem to care. Oh look, after saving a music video from one of our terrible performances, the great and mighty Sebastian Toot has returned. All hail the mighty Toot! Sebastian tells us that we can enter advanced music lessons? Are you kidding me? When input methods in a game are this shallow, how do you get advanced training? What is it? They do their best to sort of teach you how to waggle every instrument properly. You can augment the sound of your instrument by pressing or holding different buttons, but it isn't necessary at all. The game is so simplified that it's barely a game. Why did they do this? Why did they make it so empty and so pointless? It's probably because of the Wii ethos. Nintendo's prerogative at this time was to push developers to utilize motion control driven gameplay. So this, the bulk of instruments focusing on waggle inputs, it makes sense. Nintendo felt it was easier to wave a hand and push a button. And heck, motion controls were handled well on Wii in plenty of titles. Developers could make compelling experiences without relying heavily on classic button inputs. I, I mean, the very game that sold the Wii proved that. Yes, but we need more with Wii music. Most of the time, you're just waggling, a waggle that equates to one ultra boring input. Sports games are a lot of physical actions, swinging a baseball bat, a tennis racket, golf club, large movements. So mimicking them in the air? Yeah, sort of makes sense. But a piano? Piano. Nobody plays a piano looking like this. Motion controls add to the complexity. We don't know exactly when input waggle is being read by the console. Is it when the controller's at a certain angle? How quickly does it need to move? Is it comparatively different for people with longer or shorter arm spans? Wish we knew, because sometimes the game seems to toss in random notes when we feel like we've barely shifted the controller at all. In Nintendo's desire to make a simplified musical game, they accidentally made something far are more convoluted to play. If you've watched us before, you've seen us complain about motion controls. This right here, this is why we tend to be pretty negative about them. They can be used effectively, but they are not the solution to every problem. And based off our experiences here, controller waving is totally not the solution to playing multiple instruments. Let's face it, playing a guitar in Wii Music is akin to playing an air guitar, only it's somehow worse? I mean, no one can hear you play the air guitar wrong, can they? In Wii music, however, I think everyone can sorta hear it. That isn't working out for us, right? Even when you're doing your very best to stay on beat, it's still admittedly pretty sloppy sounding. I mean, don't just take it from our poor attempts at gameplay, you deserve to hear this officially from the company that made the game. Nintendo! E3 2008! Wii Music makes a notorious showing. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the drumming showcase that gave us a hint at what Wii Music offered. <laughs> Yeah, that barefooted, enthusiastic solo lives perpetually in our collective gaming hearts and minds. But we'd argue Wii Music's gameplay prospects took a far, far worse turn when Nintendo's own staff joined veteran game designer Shigeru Miyamoto in performing a classic tune. <laughs> Everyone on this stage is doing their absolute best to make Wii music not look or sound like a joke. It is insane to me that they allowed themselves to go on stage when everything sounded this bad. Well, uh, back in the game's lessons, they showcase how to make a complicated jam session by playing all the instruments for a single song. As per usual, nothing sounds good here, even when you wave through the lessons as accurately as possible. It's simply another layer that feels like it's tacked on to create a barrier to new instruments and songs. It's like, hey, if I suck at playing one part of the band, surely it won't sound worse if I play all the other parts. And 
look. We can even score ourselves when we're finished. You can label your performance from zero to 100. Go ahead, give yourself a perfect score. Makes no difference anyway. You can score yourself perfectly every time. Sebastian Toots generally has the same reaction no matter what you label yourself, unless you give yourself a big old goose egg. Scores are meaningless. Don't believe us? Well, watch this. We're getting a lesson on how to play with Japanese instruments as a band. We're gonna go through the whole thing, not playing any instruments for any member at all, completely ignoring each moment of this tutorial. Here is our final result with every section of the song combined. You, uh, you, you hear that? Of course you don't. A real game would tell you to try again, because clearly you failed the lesson. We didn't learn anything. But in Wii Music, we gave ourselves a perfect score, baby. Oh, yeah! Each lesson is essentially a repeat of the last, featuring different styles of music. Most irritating of all, they use a grand total of one song for every lesson. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I swear, if I ever hear that song again, I'm gonna run into a glass shop with hammers. Honestly, did no one think this through? They thought it was a good idea to pummel the player with blast after blast of preschool mega hit 1838? I mean, they didn't even change the backgrounds for each theme. Look, the same flowery meadows over and over. It's the epitome of monotonous. All these lessons mostly come down to swinging your hands around like an idiot. Who am I kidding? These aren't lessons. You don't get any better by completing them. It's just a way to unlock songs. They even add an additional layer of lessons on top of these ones to further unlock more songs down the road. It's madness. Let's go back to our Wii Music gameplay and really take in the symphonic pleasures of this game. Ooh, yikes! Poorly synthesized renditions of, well, mostly children's music? So, best case scenario for this game? The perfect Wiimote Wobbler dishes out a nursery rhyme that sounds like it's been fed through a crumbling walkie-talkie. The quality is abysmal. Not at all like in Guitar Hero. Uh, again with the Guitar Hero, huh, like you're trying to make a point or something. What can I say? That series was Wii Music's direct competition. Guitar Hero made use of a lot of master recordings. We're talking high quality audio tracks from the original recordings directly from actual artists. Sure, some were covers, but even then, this approach allowed the game to house tons of songs with amazing fidelity. Both the notes you hit as a player and the backing tracks still sound great today. Feels kind of unfair to keep comparing Wii Music to other music games. But it only feels that way because they got so much wrong. And you know what? Adam, you know how to play guitar, right? Sure. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, great. Here, try some rock music. Every breath you take by the police. This is nothing like playing a real guitar, or even a guitar hero guitar. I'm a huge fan of the police. I know this song very well. And even though I know what should happen in this song, it's still hard to follow because this is an abbreviated version. What do you mean? Like it's missing the vocals or something? Well, yes, it and every other song in this game is missing vocals, but I noticed that this track was around one minute and 30 seconds. Every Breath You Take by the Police from their fifth album, Synchronicity, has a runtime of four minutes and 14 seconds. You don't even get to the middle of the song. Not you mention it. Yeah, the song was super short. By comparison, Guitar Hero 2 used the police's message in a bottle and didn't use the album recording, but a cover. Yet, it still sounds fantastic. Vocals and all. Someone gets my message in the 
end, it was the full song, not some cut short version. Sounds like the Guitar Hero team really cared about the music they put into their games, uh, even if they weren't able to get the original recordings. It's pretty essential that they did care. Take Guitar Hero 3 from 2007, one of the series' biggest releases. This came out one year before Wii Music. It had a built-in song list of over 70 tracks. With DLC that tipped that track list into the triple digits. No, we're not exactly fans of paid DLC, but we're trying to make a point here. A majority of these songs are from popular bands. They are tunes people know. We got Queens of the Stone Age, Rage Against the Machine, Smashing Pumpkins, Pearl Jam, Muse, Sonic Youth, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Weezer, Black Sabbath, The Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, Beastie Boys, and many, many more. All in one game. Pretty impressive, right? Each of the songs featured from these bands played out in full, not cut down, because that would be disrespectful to the songs and the artists and the people who would have to listen to them. But wait, not all the songs in Wii Music can be shortened versions, right? Let's have a look at the song list. Nintendo was on a hot streak with the Wii. They could have laid down some serious royalty dough. Yeah, yeah, they, um, just take a look yourself. 13? They licensed 13 popular songs? Yes, that seems to be the case. As far as I can tell, each one is a cut down version of the original, so you're not actually getting the full song with any of them. That can't be all the songs. No, there are 50 songs in total, but it's just a whole lot of stuff that I'm not sure people will actively care about. Waltz, the collective might of Nintendo, a directly produced and developed title in the Flea Waltz. It's mostly super generic folk songs and a couple classical music pieces. Pretty much public domain stuff. Lucky for us, they did include some tracks from Nintendo-owned properties. Hey, that's not so bad, right? Nintendo has one of the most notable music libraries in all of video games. Heck, the director, uh, Kazumi Totaka, he'd know that. He made a bunch of them. What do we got? Seven songs. <laughs> Seven. Seven. No, why wouldn't... It's their own music. They don't even have to pay licensing fees. The paltry selection of licensed tunes is more than the freaking in-house music tracks that they own the rights to. It's a shame. It really begs the question, why? One Zelda song, one Mario song, one of Zero song, two Animal Crossing songs, and uh... Come on. The Wii Sports menu music and the... What? The, the Wii music music? The song we've been hearing in the main menu? Why? I can go to the main menu. I can just wave my hands around in the main menu and, and I'll have a better gameplay experience there. No Metroid, no Star Fox, no Kirby, no Donkey Kong, no Punch-Out, not even a hint of Pokemon. If Wii Music was just song selections from the Super Mario franchise alone, they could have easily filled the game with more tracks than all of Guitar Hero 3's set list. And it would have cost Nintendo nothing. It's madness. One of Guitar Hero 3's biggest costs was arranging, covering, and licensing licensing all the music that they did not own. And here's Nintendo sitting on a gold mine of content, barely <laughs> acknowledging it exists. Look, folks, we get it. We're still doing a lot of pointing to the Guitar Hero series here, but it isn't just about looking at another console and saying, oh, look at what they have over there. I wish we had that on the Wii. Like we said, Guitar Hero sparked a revolution. That revolution began on the PlayStation 2. The first game was exclusive to Sony's hugely successful platform. By the time the series grew, into its third iteration, you could buy it practically everywhere. That's right. By the time Wii Music hit the scene, not only was the Guitar Hero series popular, but so was its rival, Rock Band. Each had a bunch of entries across multiple platforms. Most importantly, that included the Wii. So Nintendo wasn't making Wii Music in a vacuum. Anyone that owned a Wii had options. They could easily pick up much more established, better produced music games. So comparing Wii Music to similar games, it's what every consumer did at the time. Guitar Hero's predecessors, and even some of its successors, largely focused on one instrument at a time. Guitar Hero was, well, played with a guitar, obviously. Other music genre titles incorporated instruments like pianos, drums, microphones, and a whole host of other things. But that is where Wii Music stands on the bleeding edge, people. See, Wii Music didn't take the easy road and mold its gameplay around performing with one instrument. That's right! We did unlock some instruments, didn't we? How many did they put on the roster? Your experience begins with just playing instruments. There are over 60 in Wii Music. What? 
over 60 in Wii music. The game has more instruments than it has freaking songs? You're kidding me! And the only reason I can think of for them having so darn many is that they weren't bound by plastic peripherals. They could make you wiggle and jiggle any which way to simulate whatever they could dream of. Oh, please tell me we don't have to. Look at every instrument in the game! <laughs> Great idea! Ah! Not a thing. Not one instrument felt good to play or listen to. I'm beside myself. So much wasted potential. So much lost time. Look, folks, we know this is a game tons of people bought back in the day. And it seems like some people thought it was, eh, like, okay, somehow. But the two of us, we don't believe that. What we played was a shallow game that clearly failed to get anywhere near the quality standards of its music genre contemporaries. Comparing this to Guitar Hero and Rock Band, clearly if Nintendo was trying to aim for that market, they failed spectacularly. <laughs> We can compare Wii Music with another Nintendo-owned property and see that the company can, in fact, accomplish much of what Wii Music was painfully trying to do. This is Rhythm Heaven Fever. It was released to the Nintendo Wii in 2012. The game features a collection of music-driven rhythm games and a simplistic control scheme. Yeah. The game is a blast, featuring awesome characters, great music, and ultra fun gameplay. Many of the games in this title controlled with a single button press. No waving the Wii mode around here, people. No, it's not technically Nintendo's answer to Guitar Hero. It's more like Nintendo's musical reinvention of WarioWare, which is also a Nintendo joint, but uh, uh, where was I? Oh, Rhythm Heaven is a way, way more fun and well-executed music title than, ugh, this mess. So, if we take the basics of what Wii Music was trying to be, does it achieve any of its goals? Is it easy to play? No. Is it fun to listen to? No. How about using it as a musical performance tool? No! Wii Music is not a good performance tool. It's a head-shakingly terrible compressed audio fest, a game so at odds with its own input methods that it can sound terrible even when played correctly. It's embarrassingly short on tunes from a company that has a wide history of impeccable and accessible music. It features dozens of unnecessary, warbly playing instruments. It gets everything wrong. Pull the Wiimo to our mouths and play a real awkward version of Taps with a single button. Cause Wii Music? It's just 